Hi folks, Matt Easton here of Scholar Gladiatoria. So I did a video not that long ago, a couple of months ago I think, maybe a bit more than that now, about black powder weapons. I'm basically saying that black powder is less powerful in general than nitro loads. Um, and quite correctly, some people picked me up on that and said it's not as simple as that and that essentially black powder um, burns at a slower rate um, but the actual um, muzzle energy might be roughly equivalent to lighter nitro loads and this kind of stuff. Yes, essentially that's basically true. However, to practical extents, um, I have shot um, obviously modern uh, shotguns um, at things um, and I have shot my black powder shotgun at things and it's without a shadow of a doubt the uh, nitro loads, modern nitro loads, send shot a lot further and are going to do more damage at, um, at kind of medium range um, than the black powder loads will do. There's various reasons for that um, and it, obviously it relates to also the size of load that you put into the, into the firearm. Um, but one particular point that came up was about bullets not having a desirable effect on the enemy. Um, and many people went, oh well if I load up my Colt Navy or my Enfield rifle or my um, Springfield rifle or whatever with a black powder load, um, I can shoot through uh, a you know gelatin um, ballistic target with a uh, winter coat on it uh, and it will go through and out the other side and carry on going, yes, that, that is usually what happens. However, and this is the real point of, that I want to make in this video, you cannot deny that there are historical accounts of bullets not having an effect on the target as would be desired. Now yes, there are many reasons for this. It's not, it's not necessarily purely down to the fact that black powder is or at least good black powder, is less powerful than, than modern smokeless cartridges. However, as some people touch on and allude to in their sort of rebuttals to what I've said about this subject in the past, there was a varying of quality of black powder in, this, in the 18th and 19th centuries. And if we look at the Napoleonic era, for example, it was reckoned that British black powder was generally of a better quality or essentially more powerful um, than French black powder for numerous reasons that I don't fully understand but this is a fairly widely accepted or widely spoken about fact. It may be an urban myth incidentally and if it is then please illuminate me on this but lots of sources that I've read seem to refer to this fact that British black powder was essentially better quality than the French black powder. Um, and of course there's the other problem of the um, essentially the round that you're putting into the into the barrel not having the best seal or poten potentially damp getting into the powder and things like this. There are all sorts of factors that are undesirable that can mean that the um, that the the effect of your firearm isn't optimal. And a lot of those things if you're on a range and shooting on a range and loading carefully and using modern produced black powders and doing everything, you know, the precise amounts and doing everything as you should be doing it, you won't see those things happen on a range, but they did happen in war in historical periods. And as I mentioned, the fact of the matter is, is we do have accounts from the Crimean War and from various other um, various other wars in the middle of the 19th century where muzzle, you know, where muzzle loading was still de rigueur, um, where musket balls particularly, but occasionally revolver um, bullets as well, didn't really have much effect on the target. And incidentally, from the Indian Mutiny, um, there, are, uh, there are examples of people unloading their revolvers, and the same thing happened in Egypt and the Sudan as well, of unloading their revolvers into enemies and it not really stopping them. <laughs> um, and that's, a, that's stopping power of, of pistols is a big topic and there's been a lot, um, there's a lot spoken about that so I won't go into that in any depth here at all. But there we go, really just to say that yes, optimally a black powder firearm, once it's loaded, because they're a pain in the ass to load essentially and they're quite dirty and all this kind of stuff and they make a big cloud of smoke, but once it's loaded should have a very um, <laughs> forceful effect on the target much like a modern round um, and so you know something like a, a 
44 caliber um, Remington revolver, for example, will have a similar effect on a human target to a modern 9mm handgun. Yes. However, because there are so many parameters for things to go wrong with muzzle loading firearms, and you know the the there are more likely to be gaps where gases escape and um, and power is energy is lost and and uh, powder might not be as good as it should be and all of these other factors that come into play in real life for for all of those reasons sometimes these black powder guns didn't perform very well um, or as well as we would maybe assume that they did um, and there are historical. Um, occurrences of this and recordings of this happening. So that's that's it really, that's all I want to say is that history tells us that sometimes firearms in the middle of the 19th century and certainly going back in the Napoleonic period weren't always as effective as we might think they were. Cheers guys! Thank you for watching, please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.